What's up, Mullen fans? I wanted to share a video with you all about the topic of a hostile takeover because that specific topic has been circulating around, been seen it on social media, and it's been in regards to the proposal number four for the upcoming shareholder meeting with that being switching from state of incorporation from Maryland to Delaware. If I'm not mistaken, David Mishery said in one of the interviews with Financial Journey that he wanted to switch from Maryland to Delaware to try and prevent a hostile takeover on the company because the company has been underperforming as far as the stock price and we've seen plenty of other EV stocks that have been running on certain days and Mullen just continues to trend down. The state of Delaware has an anti-takeover statute which provides that if a person or entity, an interested stockholder, acquires 15% or more of the voting stock of a Delaware corporation, the target without prior approval of the target's board, then the interested stockholder may not engage in a business. And that's something David has voiced that he wants to prevent a hostile takeover of the company. And this clip I'm about to play reveals the methods that an interested taker uses to acquire a takeover target company. Let me know your thoughts following the clip below. Let's get right into it, we go. Hostile takeover occurs when someone buys a business that does not want to be sold. If you think about it, this is a very bizarre situation. Now, businesses are bought and sold all the time, but usually the business wants to be sold. This is a situation when the business does not want to be sold. So let's start with the corporate structure. Publicly traded corporations issue stock and the percentage of stock you hold is your percentage of voting rights. So if you own 25% of the stock, you have a 25% vote on major company issues. Now it's not practical for stockholders to make the day-to-day -day decisions of running a company. So the stockholders select a board of directors to run the corporation. The stockholders choose the board of directors and the board of directors hires the CEO. Now there's different variations on this structure. For instance, a corporation can issue different types of stock with different levels of voting rights. But this is the general corporate structure. The point is that the CEO has to answer to the public. So a publicly traded company has issued investment opportunities to the public. So there's people out there in the public who are buying and selling shares in your company. This means the CEO has a responsibility to the public for how they are running the company. And if the public doesn't like what they're doing, the public can get rid of the CEO. So the public can vote to change the board and the board can vote to change the CEO. The tricky thing is that a CEO can influence this process. So the CEO normally sits on the board and the board put forward new potential board members for shareholders to vote on. So there's lots of ways that a CEO can influence this process. And from a practical standpoint, there's just a lot of things they can do to keep themselves in power. There are three things in common in all hostile takeovers. So if you're planning a hostile takeover, you're gonna need these three things. The first thing you need to pull off a hostile takeover is you need a hated CEO. This is perhaps the most important thing that you need. Because if you have a company with a CEO that everybody loves, you're not gonna pull off a hostile takeover because the board is gonna listen to the CEO, they're not gonna listen to you. What you wanna find is you want to find the most hated CEOs in America because these are the people who are weak. These are the people who are not gonna have the support of their board. So the lesson here for you business people out there is it's important for CEOs to be liked because in a takeover threat, you need the board to stand behind you. The second thing you need to pull off a hostile takeover is you need poor performance. You need to find a company that is underperforming. So an example of this would be like, if you were to find a company that is a well-known company, it has a great product, and somehow they're making a loss every year and you look at this company and it boggles your mind, how could they not be making a profit? That's an underperforming company. 
And one way you can, you can find this is you look at the company's competitors. If the competitors are doing well in the same market and this company is not, that's a sign they're underperforming. And that opens the company up to a takeover threat for someone to come in and say, I can raise this company's performance. So the lesson here is that it's not enough for a CEO just to be liked. You have to deliver results. The third thing you need to pull off a hostile takeover is you need a strategic plan. You need some way to communicate to the shareholders the specifics of what you're going to do if they vote for you. So how are you gonna make the company better? Are you gonna bring in a better capital structure? Are you gonna do better marketing? Are you gonna expand into new markets? What are you going to do to make the shareholders more money? Ultimately, this is about money. So shareholders are people who have invested in your company and they want a return. So they want to know, how are you going to increase the price of their shares? The lesson here is that for a hostile takeover, it's not enough to just say, this person's doing a bad job. That's not enough. You also have to say how you can do the job better. So to recap, if you're gonna pull off a hostile takeover, you need these three things. You need a hated CEO, you need poor performance, and you need a strategic plan. So just using that criteria as your guidepost, if you were to look at the business landscape today, there are a lot of prime takeover targets. Now I'm not gonna be naming any names here, I'm gonna leave that up to you. Even if you have a smaller division of a larger publicly traded company, you have a case to come in and improve the performance of that division because that division is destroying the value of all the shareholders. The most important thing I want you to understand about hostile takeovers is that it's all about productivity. Productivity is the true driver behind business. So productivity drives stock price and productivity drives shareholder voting. So in a business, when their productivity starts to go down, that's opening the door for takeover threats. And in a hostile takeover, somebody is just coming in and saying, I can do things better. I can raise this company's productivity. Go. Ooh. Go. Ooh.